Good morning, Grade Nines. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ms. Shields, and I am the Grade Nine Guidance Counselor for second semester here at St. Thomas More. Today, we are going to discuss uh, course selections for Grade 10. In front of you, you should all have an option advice sheet that was handed out to you by your teacher this morning. Teachers, if you haven't submit, handed that out, could you please do so now? I'm going to ask all of you to pay close attention as we go through some of the information here and uh, that you please have a pen or pencil with you and as you follow along you might have some information that you want to write down. I believe that the PowerPoint presentation that is about to go uh, will be posted on the website so you can also review that with your parents and I want to just thank Mrs. Julia for loaning me the layout for this PowerPoint presentation. So we're about to begin. Make sure everyone has your handouts available and a pen or pencil. Okay, so first thing you should know is that course selection this year will be done through my blueprint. Later on in this presentation, I'm going to explain how to select courses using my blueprint but my blueprint is the program we will be using and you will access it through my site. This year, as you go into grade 10, you will be selecting eight courses. So there are six compulsory courses that you must take in grade 10 and you have the option of taking two electives. Grade 10 year is the only year where you will take half credit courses. So when you do log on to my blueprint, you're actually going to see space for nine courses. And that's because the mandatory course careers and civics are each half credit courses. Again, I will go through the instructions on how to add those courses before the end of the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So this year in grade nine, the majority of your courses were de-streamed. So you, you did not have to pick what type of English you want, what type of math you want. This is gonna change a little bit for grade 10. In grade 10, we do have streamed classes for some of the compulsory courses. So English, math, science, and Canadian history, you will decide which of those courses you want to take. When you log on to my blueprint and you're following the instructions, you will see course codes. And so I have written down here on your option advice sheet information about what those codes mean. The fifth digit in the course code identifies the stream of the course. So you see the example on the screen in front of you are three different grade 10 English courses. All three start with the same four digits, ENG2. So the ENG stands for English, the two stands for the grade, so grade 10. The next digit, you'll notice, is different in all three codes. That digit is what identifies the stream of the course, or the level of the course. The D indicates an academic level course. The P indicates an applied level course and the L identifies that that course is a locally developed English course. Since you have not seen these course codes before, you might not quite understand what they mean. I've tried to give you some explanations on this PowerPoint, but also on the handouts that you have. Applied courses in general lead to grade 11 and grade 12 college bound or mixed courses. Academic courses generally lead to grade 11 and grade 12 university-bound courses. And then the locally developed courses in grade 10 will lead you into grade 11 workplace-bound courses. A couple of things you need to know when selecting courses. First of all, all four of the compulsory streamed courses do not have to be taken at the same stream. You can take a course at the applied level for math and academic for English. But you should know that many grade 11 courses will have prerequisites. And what a prerequisite is, is a course that you must take and successfully complete before you take that one. So for 
So how do you decide which courses to take in grade 10? I have a couple of tips for you here and also number four on your handout. So question number four, we'll go into more detail about this. But a few things to consider. First and foremost, you should read your teacher comments on your report card. Many teachers at, at the end of the semester will give comments about what course they recommend you take next year. So make sure that you don't just look at the marks on your report cards and review the comments from your teachers, particularly in those compulsory courses. As well, you should speak to your parents, your guidance counselor, or your special education resource teacher. And you can think about your post-secondary destination. Where is it that right now, in grade nine, you are thinking of going to after high school? One thing you should know is that students wishing to keep the university option open need to have, the, are advised, sorry, to take the grade 10 academic English because all university programs in Ontario will require university level English and that grade 10 academic English will be the prerequisite. And as I mentioned earlier, you can read more about this information on question number four on your option advice sheet that was handed out this morning. Okay, so this year, you also get to select two electives. So these are courses that you can take in pretty much any subject area. But uh, something you should keep in mind is that along with the compulsory courses in English, history, science, math, civics, and careers, there are a few other compulsory courses needed to earn your high school diploma. So if you did not take some of these courses in grade nine, you should consider using your electives in grade 10 for these courses. In order to graduate with an Ontario Secondary School Diploma, you will need to earn one art credit, one physical education credit, and then uh, a credit in the groups. So in group B, you have the choice of taking a technology course, a grade 11 science course, co-op, a second French or a computer studies course. Consider potentially using your electives to take one of those courses to complete this graduation requirement. The group C requirement includes any one of a business, an additional phys ed course, a second art, a second French or a co-op. So again, when you are looking for electives to take, consider looking through your graduation requirements to ensure that you have met these requirements. So we just finished first semester. And I hope that all of you had an incredible time transitioning into high school. For some of you though, academics may have been a bit of a struggle. And if you are one of those students, I would love to meet you this semester and I hope to meet you. Please book a guidance appointment with me um, or I will come around and try to find all of you to introduce myself. But for some of you, it may be the reality that you did not earn all of your credits for grade nine. In order to graduate in Ontario with a secondary school diploma, you must successfully complete 30 credits. If you fail a compulsory course, you must repeat that course. So remember, English, science, math, geography, those were compulsory courses in grade nine. If you did not complete one of those classes, if you were not successful, you will need to repeat it in order to graduate high school. Failed compulsory courses should be chosen when you select your courses for next year. So instead of looking at an alternative elective, you should be putting in, for example, the grade nine English class and the grade 10 English class. You may have the opportunity to repeat some of these courses in summer school. At this time, I do not have information about summer school. Typically, that information comes to us near the end of March. So pay attention to morning announcements for that information. It is not available yet, but if you decide to take a summer course, please 
come and speak to me so that we can change your course selections next year. I want to remind you, because I've said that compulsory courses are required to be repeated. Even if you fail an elective course, you could put your ability to take spares or graduate on time in jeopardy. So please make sure that you are doing your homework, asking questions, and most importantly, submitting everything and coming to class every day. Okay, I want to look now at how you are going to select your courses. This screen may look a bit familiar for you. There's many more icons on here than you probably have when you log on to my site. But this is the landing page when you log on to my site with our school board. In amongst all of those icons, you should see a blue circle with a white M. All of you have access to this program called My Blueprint. You're going to locate that icon, and that's what you will use to make course selections. When you go into My Blueprint, you will see on the left hand side of the screen a list of options that you can click on. You will select the high school title and from there you will be able to then put courses into your course selection. You will see all of your grade 9 courses filled in and the grade 10 courses will be blank. They'll have a little plus beside each one of the cells, and when you click on that, you'll be able to add a course. So when you click on that plus symbol, it will open a drop-down menu with course selections. If you're staying within the subject area, you will see all the grade 9 and 10 courses. Please make sure that you are reading across the entire line to make sure that you're putting in the correct course and stream because all of the courses are in there. When you click on that drop-down menu, there could be up to 10 courses that show up. Make sure that you don't just click on the first one you see. You read, scroll down, and find the one for the grade 10 and then the stream that you are looking for. When you click on a course, another menu will pop up. And this will explain to you, or give to you, the ministry definition or explanation of what the course is. It will list prerequisites, how many credits it's worth, what grade it's in, and right at the bottom, uh, sorry, at the top, you will see the subject, and across the top, it will tell you again, once again, what stream the course is. Make sure you read the descriptor to know that you are in the right course. My blueprint, if you haven't used it yet, you will definitely be using it in grade 10 for your careers class, but my blueprint offers a bunch of information to help you stay on track with your graduation requirements. So when you log on to my blueprint and you're making your course selections, on the right hand side of the screen you will see a box that looks like this and it says graduation indicator. There you can see all of the courses that you have completed to date out of the 30 mandatory courses you need to graduate, and you can even view your progress. I highly recommend that you use my blueprint, um, not just for course selections, but to stay on track and make sure that you have all the courses and graduation requirements that you need. So this is just another view of what that graduation progress will look like. So if you were to click on that, uh, that option, it will again open up into a larger screen where you can see all of the graduation requirements for an Ontario Secondary School Diploma and see whether or not you have earned those credits yet. Some students in grade 10 consider what we call reaching ahead or doubling up. And they sometimes choose to take grade 11 courses while they are in grade 10. I want to speak to those of you who are considering doing that to let you know of something that you really need to be prepared for. The Ministry of Education requires full disclosure of all grade 11 and 12 final marks. 
So what that means is any attempt in a grade 11 or 12 course will appear on your transcript. So make sure you're prepared. Make sure that you are ready for the increased expectation as far as schoolwork and homework for those grade 11 courses if you do choose to reach ahead. And again, this might be a conversation you want to have with that specific subject teacher, your parents, guidance counselor, or resource teacher. Again, when you are selecting your courses, things to consider, things to consider if you want to reach ahead. There are, in grade 11 and 12, senior courses. Another change to the titles and um, names of the courses you take. So we're going to move from academic and applied to university, college, apprenticeship, and workplace courses. If you are considering reaching ahead, you will need to review this information. And again, I do have some answers to that in your option sheets that were handed out today. I also want to mention that it's never too early to start planning. Sometimes the best way to consider what courses to take in grade 10 is to fast forward a little bit in your mind to where you want to be after high school and then to work backwards from there. So if you are planning to go to university, and again, this, web, this slideshow will be on the school website, so if you don't have time to write this down or you can't see the title of that website there, uh, you can go on to the school website later on and, as you're watching this with your parents and follow along and find this link. But for those of you who are considering going to university, a valuable website that you can use is ontarouniversitiesinfo.ca. From there, you can learn all about what courses you would need to take for the different programs you might be interested in. Recognizing that your ideas may change as you continue through high school, but this can give you um, some structure to your course selections. For those of you who right now are thinking about college level, or going to college, or not quite sure, I have also included the OntarioColleges.ca website here. This will give similar information for you, such as programs available and requirements to get into those programs in college. I can't stress enough how important proper planning is for your academic success. Use my blueprint once you get on there if you haven't been before. Scroll around, look around on that program because there's a lot of valuable information on there that can help you figure out who you are, what you want to do, and what your options are. Next year when you are taking career studies, you're going to get a lot more information about this. Um, but for now, my blueprint is a great resource for you. So once again, here's the personal planning chart that you will use to make your course selections on my blueprint. That's what it's gonna look like. You're gonna be in the grade 10 column selecting all of your courses. Again, you will see that the course column is a little bit longer than the other grades and that's simply because you do take half credit courses in grade 11 in careers and civics. Okay, I've come to the end of this presentation. But there is some very important details that you need to know. March 2nd is the due date for your course selections. So you can start now adding courses to your My Blueprint course selections, but everything needs to be selected by March 2nd. You also are required to complete a $50 activity fee on School Cash Online and make sure you keep your record somewhere. And then finally, typically there's a verification form, a registration form that is emailed out or handed out to you and you have to make sure that if there's any updates to personal information, new address, new parent phone number, new email, that that information is completed by March 2nd. 
That is the end of the presentation for today. I want to thank all of you for paying attention and to your teachers for giving me this opportunity to take some of their time away so that I can share this information with you. I look forward to working with all of you this semester. If you have any questions, I will be in the guidance office Monday to Friday uh, for periods one and two. Please book a guidance appointment so we can go over any questions you might have. Thank you and have a great day, everyone.